I'm free diving for 30 days. Free diving is this unique and beautiful sport of exploring the underwater world, which is totally reliant on the human body's incredible ability to go for minutes at a time without breathing. So for the next 30 days, I'm jumping headfirst into the world of free diving, learning as much as I can to see if I can go from my day one dive of eight meters to my new goal of 20 meters deep by day 30. In part one of this two-part series, we tested my longest breath hold and deepest free dive. And then over the next two weeks, I trained to try and improve those metrics. I was struggling with some equalization issues, but finally I managed to make it to the bottom of our first dive location. But I have a feeling that I can go much deeper. So in this video, I'm getting back into the water for another two weeks of intensive training before heading up to the Great Barrier Reef to put myself to the real test. Okay, it's now time for another dive session. We're heading up the coast a little bit to a shipwreck dive site which is approximately 35 meters deep. It's definitely a step up from 10 meters at Shelly Beach. It was a little bit nerve wracking because this was the day after a shark attack happened in Australia. So sharks were definitely at the top of my mind. And as we started diving down, doing a few warm up dives, I was feeling pretty vulnerable in the water. Anyway, I had to sort of shake that out of my head a little bit because I'm realizing that freediving is much a mental thing as it is a physical thing. So you've got to have quite a positive mindset going into it, I think. And then we dropped the anchor to 15 meters to see if I could get to the bottom. I started pulling myself down the line and using all the little tips and techniques that Dan had taught me over the past couple of weeks, I managed to get down to the bottom of the 15 meter line without any buildup of pain. And when I got there, I wasn't hanging around. I could feel the urge to breathe coming on pretty strong. So, I started pulling myself straight back up to the surface. Tell me I'm making good progression, Dan. You're making good progression. Oh, thanks, mate. <laughs> Do I have to say that? Yeah. <laughs> and then, after a couple of dives reaching the 15 meter mark, Dan dropped the line down to 20 meters. So, I gave it a crack, pulling myself down the line, trying to stay calm. I didn't have a watch on me, so I wasn't sure exactly where I was, but I imagine as I got around the 15 meter mark, my instinct was to stop and turn around, but I hadn't reached the bottom of the line yet. So I kept pulling myself down one hand after another until eventually this urge to breathe started coming on pretty strong. I had to stop, turn around and pull myself as quickly as I could back up to the surface. where Dan informed me that I made it down to a new personal record of 17 meters. It wasn't the full 20 meters, but I was pretty stoked after feeling like I wasn't making much progress in the first couple of weeks. Oh, that's sick. I was super chill going down, turned around and I was like, oh, it's gonna be a long way up. So there's a second here and I was like, oh, I better go up quick. And then I was like, ah, oh, no, I'm sweet. <laughs> sweet. <Yeah. laughs> and it now felt like my depth was more limited by my breath holding ability than an equalization issue. Having pushed myself out of my comfort zone to get to 17 meters, we decided to go fun diving, exploring the shipwreck and some cool caves in the area. There was a wobbly one like right above Dan's head and he was about to hit it. I did hit it, touch me, hold up. Are you ready for the big cat? As I followed Dan down this shipwreck, I basically smacked into the shipwreck, head first. The mask came off my eyes and filled with water, and so I basically just kicked as quick as I could to get back up to the surface, trying not to panic too much. And when I got there, I had these little cuts all over my forehead. I remember in the moment, I wasn't too bothered by it. I sort of just thought, oh, I'm fine. It'll be all right, it's just a couple of scratches. But as we got on the boat and sort of drove home, I remember thinking, I was pretty fortunate that I was okay and that I didn't hurt myself more or like it was easy for me to just kick back up to the surface. And it did make me think, what happens if you're down there and something more serious happens? You know, like maybe you get stuck or you knock yourself out. How can you protect yourself from something more serious happening? 
I had a chat with Dan and he sort of reassured me that a lot of this was to do with never diving alone. I realized that if you're always diving with a buddy, especially someone who's had more experience than you in the water, you're generally gonna be okay. So we headed back home and on the way home, it was this beautiful day and a whole pot of dolphins came swimming around the boat, which was a super awesome experience to have, especially after the sort of dramatic finish to that dive session. I jumped in the water and held onto the boat and was filming these dolphins as they were swimming in front of the boat. It was a really cool experience. Over the next few days, I did more practice at home, as well as a couple of pool sessions where we did some training that Dan calls breath hold adaptation training. You put the weight belt around you, sink to the bottom of the pool, and practice moving back along the pool, holding your breath for as long as you can. In this way, you're exerting yourself whilst also holding your breath. And that can help strengthen your resilience to the buildup of CO2 in your body. Another form of this adaptation training that we were doing was breathing all the oxygen out of your lungs. And then when you've got nothing left in you, sinking to the bottom of the pool and trying to hold your breath. That's really tough, but that is another great way to be more resilient and to deal with low levels of oxygen or high levels of CO2. And that was the end of week three. Wow, what a journey this has been. And I've still got one week left. But after a solid first three weeks of training, Dan decided that the final week should be spent on one of Freediving Central's boat trips in the Great Barrier Reef. There, he said we could test my day 30 depth. But first, we wanted to test my static breath hold in a pool before we went on the trip. So we got straight into breath hold testing. In your own time, when you're ready, I want you to do your final breath. As soon as I put my head down into the water, two thoughts came into my mind. I felt noticeably calmer than I did on day one. Right. And you ready? Alright, how did that feel? Good? Yeah. Better than the first time we did this? Yeah. Okay, good. So it's uh, one point four. Yeah, yeah. 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 And two was how I managed the time in my head. Instead of thinking about the time or trying to think about different things to pass the time, I was instead trying to simply observe things without actively thinking or looking at things like floating past in the water. So after the first couple of, let's say, warm-up attempts, it was time for my final attempt. I was feeling really calm and peaceful and tried to sort of relax my mind as much as possible. So the following week, we flew up to the Great Barrier Reef for my final freediving trip and the other pinnacle of this day 30 challenge, the depth test. Okay, this is my last chance to hit my 20 meter goal. I'm three meters away, the pressure's on. So to psych me up, we went fun diving. exploring the beautiful reefs and diving through these amazing caves. In fact, if you hold your breath, I'll take you with me on one of these dives.
To me, freediving is this incredible change of sensations as you go underwater. To begin with, I think it's like a bit of nerves and excitement. How long am I going to be able to stay underwater for? So all these questions pop up in my head. But then, as I sort of get down a little bit lower, after a few seconds, that goes away, and I become super calm and super peaceful. And it's this incredible, like, sort of magical feeling where you're underwater, you're weightless because you've got a weight belt on, and you can just swim around, and the urge to breathe hasn't really kicked in yet, so you're feeling almost invincible. You feel like you can just explore underwater world for as long as you want. It's a really cool feeling. And then it was time for the final test. So after a couple of warm-up dives, hanging for a few seconds at about 10 meters deep to help build up my calmness underwater, the testing begun. Dan gave me three attempts to see how deep I could go, just like we did on day one. I was feeling good. Over the past 30 days, I'd done this a few times now, so I felt noticeably more comfortable as I pulled myself deeper one hand after another. First attempt, I made it down to 17 meters before deciding to turn around and pull myself back up to safety. It's funny because each dive, I would clearly go through these different mental stages. The second attempt, I didn't have the watch to record the depth, but it was much the same as the first attempt. So I had one more try. This was my final attempt. So Dan lowered the line to 25 meters. So I did my breathe up and began the dive. As I began this ascent, I felt calm and smooth, but the deeper I pulled myself, the more nervous I'd become. It's like this weird feeling that you're essentially pulling yourself further and further away from breathing from the one vital thing that we always need. But from my weeks of training, I knew not to fixate on that thought and to relax and try and remain as calm as possible. So I kept pulling myself down the rope, further and further. And finally, after what definitely felt like a solid amount of time, I reached the little tennis ball, 25.2 meters deep. But I didn't hang there for long before I began pulling myself back up the rope. And going back up the rope is a whole different set of feelings. At the beginning of the ascent, I'm feeling really good, but as I begin ascending, this feeling turns to a little bit of anxiety as I'm slowly beginning to run out of air. And at one point, I looked up to see the surface still seemed so far away. Mission accomplished, 25.2 meters. My new personal record. Done, reached the goal. I'm happy, but I'm also part of me was, I guess, hoping that I could go a little bit deeper, to be honest. Some of the guys were getting 30 meters. I guess my competitive nature was saying, ah, oh, I want to get to the 30 meters as well. But yeah, it's been an absolutely incredible experience. I'm super grateful for Dan and his freediving school, Freediving Central, for coaching me over the past 30 days. So if you're in Australia and you want to learn how to freedive, I'll put the link to his Freediving Central School in the description of this video. And on that note, I'll see you in the next video.